Here's Lake Blair. We're right in the middle of it now. It's about two kilometres each way to the shoreline. Every direction. Completely dry. There's no water at all. But uh, what a place to be, hey? What a special place. You know, there's no one else around here except us. Hello and welcome to another video. Isn't Lake Blair a great lake? Though a shame that it is dry. Lake Blair is about 30 kilometres from McPherson's Pillar where we were in the previous video. We're now continuing our journey through the Gibson Desert. The next stage of our journey is returning to the Gun Barrel Highway to the southwest, which is about 75 kilometres away in a straight line. Come about half an hour now from our camp and we've come across this uh, beautiful tree here and it's a hardwood it's so hard I mean that must have been around for many many years now here we've noticed that it's already in its second stage of growth so it used to be a used to be a an old tree then it's 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 sort of fallen over or, or you know died or half died and now it's all grown and it's fully developed uh, into a nice big tree now something else we've noticed hey Phil is is here two branches it's actually like grafted onto itself look at that I mean that's absolutely amazing I've never seen anything like that before it's it's really weird isn't it and the other thing that we've noticed is that there seems to be the scratch marks here on the tree itself. And so we were just sort of hypothesizing whether it might be a cat scratching or perhaps some lizards trying to get up the tree. Because it is fairly soft wood. See here, I can scratch my um, fingernails into it like that and it comes up pretty easily. So it, it might be just uh, something as simple as a, a lizard uh, going up the tree or, or something like that, but it's certainly interesting nonetheless, you know, it, it is quite amazing what you find out here sometimes. Along our traverse, we came across some undulations. The views were great from a high point, so that is where we decided to have some lunch. These undulations are just to the west of the Chicalos Hills.
what we plan to do today is identify a couple of features which Carnegie named in uh, 1896 but were never transposed onto modern maps for some reason. So they are Tom's Knob and Gerald's Knob, which are at either side of the, well, are at the extremities of the Brown Range, which Carnegie named, incidentally. Now, he also named Mount Gordon and Mount Everard, and these were uh, actually, these are actually on most maps, most modern maps. But uh, yeah, the uh, Tom's Knob and Gerald's Knob aren't on maps, so we want to try and identify them. Yesterday as we were pulling into camp, we did notice that the, the northeast corner of the Brown Range, uh, this kind of a knob, so we're sort of assuming that it's going to be Tom's Knob. This particular area looks like the Great Sandy Desert, however there was only two or three sand ridges to cross over. stopped and admired Mount Everard before heading along the southeastern side of the Brown Range to try and reach the area of Tom's Knob. So we left Mount Gordon and Mount Everard on the Gun Barrel Highway probably about three hours ago now and we made our way up the southern section of the Brown Range and we have found one of Carnegie's features, here it is, we're standing on Tom, Tom's Knob. So he was one of the Brown brothers, Tom Brown who the range is named after and I can see behind the camera here is Charlie's Knob where David Carnegie took his bearings from. And we have checked the bearings, so there's no doubt in my mind that this is Tom's Knob, as mentioned by Carnegie in 1896. So really happy about that. So look at that, eh? That's the Gibson Desert there. We're truly in the middle of nowhere now. So yeah, what we're gonna do now is go around the top, the northern end of the range, and then try and find this other feature which Carnegie named Gerald's Knob. We might not get there today because it's pretty rough country but we'll give it a go anyway i'm so happy here we are tom's knob i'll put the coordinates in the description it's always good to visit a new feature such as tom's knob australia is full of such remote places I feel quite privileged to visit. Everard Junction now on the Gun Barrel Highway. This is the intersection of the Gun Barrel Highway and the Gary Highway. So right here you can see uh, this is the original barrel that Len Bedell put here in 1963. This um, is a replica plaque here uh, put here by Connie Sue Bedell in 2017. 
yeah, we've got a lot of people around here who sort of like to nick plaques for some reason, but that, that's the way it is. And there's a visitor's book here. Uh, we've checked that in the latest, um, the latest entry was the 3rd of October, which is about um, a week ago. So, um, yeah, there's a steady stream of traffic here, which is, um, which is kind of expected for this type, time of year. It is a bit of late, it's a bit late in the season. So, um, yeah, that's the Gary Highway heading up that way, which is the direction that we're going to go in. Uh, we're going to head to the Young Range and Charlie's Knob over there, which is, I don't know, uh, 20 k's or so uh, to the north. Yeah, so it's going to be another interesting day, I think. So, yeah, look, looking forward to it once again. This is the Ken on the official Charlie's Knob here in the Young Range. Now, funnily enough, there's actually three Charlie's Knobs. There's one to the west of the Gary Highway. There's one in between that knob and this knob and, and this one. Now, that's no fault of current cartographers or, you know, recent cartographers in the last 40 or 50 years. It was actually David Carnegie's fault himself because when he wrote up the description for Charlie's Knob, it was full of discrepancy and it's very hard to pinpoint the exact knob. But the cartographers in this instance chose the highest point of the Young Range, which is probably fair enough. So looking from here, we can see Tom's Knob where we were yesterday and you can see Mount Everard, Mount Gordon and we can see today's target, which is Gerald's Knob which is uh, about 170 degrees from, from here, about 25 kilometres approximately. Uh, of course, I won't know the exact position until we get there. But that's what we're going to do uh, for the rest of today, is try and uh, get to Gerald's Knob. And uh, hopefully after that, we can make our way back to the Gun Barrel Highway and possibly camp at Gerald's and Bore tonight. Well on the way to Gerard's Knob now, you can just see it out here in the distance here. Now, at the moment, the wind's, the wind's coming from the north, going pretty much in the direction that, that we're heading. And as a consequence, my temperature of the vehicle uh, was going up uh, considerably, so I had to take some precautions. So what I've done if, is I've taken the Spinifex protection uh, off, uh, because let's face it, I mean, the desert is so dry and dead here that the spinifex seeds hasn't, haven't had a chance to uh, grow anyway. So um, that we don't really need it. And what I've done here is just uh, put, put some, uh, a pillow here uh, just to allow that bit of an air gap there through the bonnet there, uh, just to allow a bit, bit of ventilation there for it. Now, and it has worked. So I put that on about uh, three kilometers away uh, further further back and I haven't had a problem since so 
Uh, I mean, mind you, this is really just because we're uh, travelling in the same direction as the as the wind. Uh, it wouldn't normally be, be an issue. Uh, mind you, I have had this vehicle since new, since about 2006 or something, and I've only ever changed the radiator out once, so it's probably due for a new radiator anyway. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you that because uh, it's a simple, simple idea, but it's most effective. After successfully reaching Gerald's Mob, we made our way back to the Gun Barrel Highway. Geraldton Ball was not far away, so we went there to camp, thus completing another expedition out this way. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again next time.